Hey guys, it is time for a project announcement. I have been waiting for a very long time to announce this one. I mean, I've, I've mentioned in, in my comments and some other things that I was going to do this build, but finally it is time to start it, and I am so excited, so pumped to get started on this build with you guys. Um, so I'm going to be building a carbon fiber kayak. Uh, as more specifically, I'm going to be building a composite kayak because it's not going to be 100% carbon fiber. I'll explain that uh, later. But um, I am building a composite kayak, and uh, this is going to be a fishing kayak, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm just really excited. So let's get into some of the details. Uh, but, but first of all, though, before we go any further, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all, anybody who has subscribed to the channel. We just hit 10,000 subs um, in the last couple weeks or so. I didn't actually see when it happened. I logged on and was like, oh, hey, look at that. So uh, thank you very much. If you've been a part of this community, I appreciate you. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you for that. But uh, let's talk about the kayak. So, so why a kayak, first of all? Um, I like to fish. And a little while back, I, I came across this YouTube channel called ND Yak Angler. And uh, people call this guy the Bob Ross of fishing. And, I mean, they're not wrong. I love his videos. I love watching them. I'll put a link to his, vid to his uh, channel in the description so you can check it out if you'd like. But uh, he fishes from a kayak. He's fishing for bass. Uh, for northern pike and he even fishes for massive muskies. I mean we're talking like 40 plus inch muskies in a kayak which is just mind-blowing for me um, but after watching his videos I decided to try it out and I gotta say it's a different experience you're smaller you can be stealthier you're lower to the water which is actually really nice for landing fish because they're you know they're right there you can land a bass Pretty easily without even having a net if you don't if you don't want to um, but it's just it makes the whole experience feel more intimate and uh, and you can really get down there on the water and you can sneak up on the fish a lot more effectively than you can on a big aluminum boat or a motor boat so um, so that's why I'm doing this I really want a fishing kayak but the problem is that the ones that are available commercially are all <laughs> they're freaking heavy uh, the lighter ones are about 60 pounds and the heavier ones are pushing closer to 90 or 100 pounds for it for a kayak and if I want something that's 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 smaller and, and lighter and, and easier to, to take out on the water and stealthier like I'd like it to weigh less too and so uh, ideally I wanted something that I could carry myself and even if I wanted to it would be I want something light enough that I could take it and, and portage up the, up a, a, a trail up to some mountain lakes that I couldn't otherwise get to with another boat and so um, so that's kind of the goal of this project and also just building is fun if you're like me you like to build and so that's what we're doing we're building so a um, couple of things first of all uh, this is a brand new design um, I make no promises about the success of this project However, if you're interested in building along with me, or if you're watching these videos in the future and you'd like to build one because it was successful, um, then uh, I, I'm making my templates for this. Everything that I'm using, I'm even, I think I'll, I'll even throw up the, uh, the 3D models if you wanted to, to download them and, and tweak them or do whatever you want with them. Um, I'm going to throw all those up on the Patreon page for Patreon subscribers. So... Uh, now, just so you know, if you were to buy plans for a boat, now this is not quite the same thing as like published plans, but if you were to buy plans for a kayak like this, you'd probably be looking at about a hundred bucks just for the plans. And so for, for a very, very small amount of money, basically coffee money, um, you could be a, a Patreon subscriber for a month, support the channel, all the money that's on there goes back into making these videos. So thank you to my Patreon subscribers. And, uh, and for, for a small amount, you could get the, the temp templates and you could make your own. You could build your own from scratch. So that's kind of my goal here is to have enough information in the videos and with what I share in the Patreon page that you could build your own if you wanted to. Um, but again, I make no promises about the success or the safety of this kayak. So with disclaimers out of the way, let's dive into the build. Um, my goal was to, to build this thing for about $500. Uh, that's that's that was the target I, I'm already having bought the materials I've got now I'm already at five hundred and eighty two dollars and I still have to buy some peel ply and I need to buy probably some bagging film I have to see if I've got enough 
So we're probably going to be pushing closer to 600, but almost $100 of that is, uh, is melamine that I'm going to be using as my tooling for laying up my sheets of carbon fiber. And so uh, it, unless I damage that, I could resell it and maybe make back, you know, m maybe half of its value. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it would be nice if I could make back half of that and we'd be in the $550 range. That's after tax too, um, which maybe you don't have tax in your state and maybe you wouldn't, uh, maybe you could be under the 500. So let's take a look at the build, at the design. So this is it. Um, I took a great deal of inspiration from another home-built kayak design called the F1430. A beautiful kayak, 14-footer, um, great for, for fishing. I just, I just love the design. I love the, the, the sleekness of it. It just looked really nice. So I wanted to target something kind of like that. Um, let me just hide the, the forms here while you look at the kayak for a second. Um, it, this one is 12 feet long. I chose 12 feet because I wanted to be able to, it was a cost saving measure for the most part. Um, the foam that I'm using for, uh, for this build, for the core material, comes in four foot by eight foot sheets. Most foams do. And so if I wanted to make it longer than 12 feet, then I would need more than one and a half sheets. So this, the, the, the idea behind making this choice is that I could fit it on one and a half sheets and I could use three sheets total um, for the deck and the hole and make the whole thing in, th in three sheets total of, of, of foam. So that was the goal. Um, that was the reasoning behind the 12 feet. Uh, it's nice and wide. It's nice and stable, but I don't think it's too wide. So it should still be fairly efficient on the water. Should track really well, especially with it being 12 feet. Uh, I wanted this central area here to be long enough that you could have your seat there and then behind you you could have a milk crate or, or a tackle box. Um, I'm not going to go crazy on my kayak with loading it up with tons of gear because part of the purpose of this is to keep it ultra lightweight. Um, I, I just prefer to be simpler anyway. I prefer the simplicity of, of having less gear and so um, I'm probably only going to carry a net, a couple of rods maybe at most and then a small tackle box with a, a few spare um, bits of tackle. But it's got plenty of room back there if you if you wanted to load it up. Um, I also thought it'd be kind of nice to have enough room that if I wanted to take one of my kids along with me, I could do that. So that that's that's that. Um, on the front and the back, I've got these uh, these uh, access doors. So those are going to be uh, sealed off bays where you can you can store your uh, your, your gear if you like. Um, It'd be, I think it'd be fun to be able to go on a backpack, or not a backpacking trip, a kayaking trip, an overnighter trip, um, pack a tent and stuff. I'd, I'd love to go take this down to like Lake Powell and, uh, and you know go explore some of the slot canes and, and the side areas in Lake Powell. Just beautiful country down there. And this would be a fun way to do it. And with it being ultra lightweight, you know, with all my gear, my backpacking, my food gear, um, just with my ultra light stuff, my ultra light tent. I could probably have this whole setup be less than 40 pounds. So um, that that's kind of, that's pretty cool. They're really, really nice if for when you're, you know, if you have to carry it through some uh, some rough areas, if you have to portage, um, it'd be nice to have that. Um, let's see. Yeah, that should be just about it. Oh, uh, the, the weight. So I designed this with the intent that somebody in the 200 to 230 pound range would be in this. Um, you could probably comfortably take it up to 275 to 300 for the, the, the total weight. I wouldn't go above 300 on this, I don't think. I think you'll be sitting kind of low on the water. You won't be very comfortable. Um, if you rock the boat a little bit, then you might get some water sloshing in. So uh, I wouldn't go much above 300 pounds for this. And with that, let's talk a little bit about the build sequence. Um, how, how are we going to build this thing? Uh, not using molds. Uh, I didn't want to take the time to make molds and then have to store these big massive molds um, for a kayak. And so um, what that means is that well, there's probably going to be a little bit more time intensive to build one-offs, um, but I don't have to make the molds first, which is really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be similar to a stitch and glue build technique. 
If you're not familiar with that, basically what you're going to do is we are going to start, not that Rannon, uh, we're going to start with some forms. Okay, uh, I'm just going to cut these out of cheap foam, uh, Home Depot extruded polystyrene, the insulation foam sheets. So I'm going to cut these out, stage them where I want them, and then uh, I'm going to, here we go, here are my two sheets that I was talking about earlier. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to lay up two sheets of carbon fiber with foam on them. I'm going to use quarter inch foam. Uh, the reason why I'm using quarter inch foam instead of something thicker, I think that you, you oh, I don't think, I know you could get a stiffer and stronger s structure by, by going up to three eighths or even half inch foam if you wanted to. However, I did some testing to, ver to, to verify this and I, my, my theory was if you have it more flexible, a little bit more flexible in the out of plane direction, then it's going to be more durable. Um, it's it's perhaps not quite as strong, but it will definitely be more durable because it's allowed to flex some. And so I tested this. I made a couple of panels with the layup that I was that I had in mind, and I dropped a golf ball from a, a high height on top of it and took some slow motion footage. I looked at the the uh, the damage done to it afterwards, and um, definitely the thinner core was by far the, uh, the, the least damage. Um, I wanted to test this a little bit more intensely with a bit more weight, so I tried a, a giant bolt and it just destroyed all of my test samples, but it was fun. Um, so we're gonna lay up these sheets uh, and I'm using melamine as my, my mold surface for laying up these sheets. that are gonna be 12 feet long and a uh, quarter inch thick, four, four feet wide. And then I can then cut my shapes out of those using these templates that I'm going to print off. And uh, I'll have my, all my panels for my deck and for my, and for my hull. And then what I will do is I can lay those panels into my forms. And I'll just hide the deck for a second. Um, So then you can lay those into the forms and you can glue them together uh, using the forms to kind of hold them together. This is called the stitch and glue method because with when you make plywood kayaks, you would actually stitch the panels together. In my case, I'm, ho I'm hoping that I don't have to do that because that's going to be really a pain trying to drill all those holes through the carbon fiber. Um, and I'm afraid that as you pull them together, just because it's a little bit soft, with, you don't have the backing on that carbon yet, it's going to it's going to tear. So um, I'm going to try using tape. My plan is masking tape to hold the panels together and keep them lined up uh, while they're in this form. So once you've got them in there and they're glued together, uh, then you will glass the hole, fiberglass the hole. So these panels, it's going to be carbon fiber on one side and then no, no fabric on the other side up to this point. The reason for that is because I want it to have some flex to it. I want these panels to flex a little bit so that they can bend around the form. The carbon fiber on one side will stiffen them just enough that I th I'm thinking it's going to be just about perfect. But then once you've got them glued together, you got all the panels put together and taped and glued, then you can fiberglass the inside and that will lock it all in place. And it's going to be super stiff at that point. It's going to be rigid. It's not going to, it's not going to move around on you very much. Um, so that's, that's my theory at least. Uh, let's see how it works. We'll do the exact same thing for the deck. I've got a separate set of, oops, um, I got a separate set of uh, forms for the deck, and uh, we'll make the deck separately. It's going to be its own piece, and then once the deck and the hole have both both been fiberglassed on the inside, then we will put the two panels together, bond them together. Um, and do one final layer of fiberglass around the entire outside to lock everything together. Um, now, why am I using fiberglass, might you ask? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, the majority of the stresses on this boat uh, are, are longitudinal stresses. It's from the boat wanting to bend. You know, you've got it supported on, on the ends and you've got a person sitting in the middle. The weight pushes down. It wants to bend this kayak so the tips come up the middle goes down. 
So if the majority of the stress is longitudinal, we want the strongest fibers to be going longitudinally. And so I'm using unidirectional carbon fiber for that purpose. Um, however, in the other directions, there's really not that much stress on the structure. It's not much. And to use more carbon fiber there wouldn't really be necessary. You know, you, we could almost certainly build a lighter structure if I used a very, very lightweight carbon fiber cloth to handle those, those stresses uh, in the other directions. However, um, a very lightweight carbon fiber cloth is obscenely expensive. It would add hundreds of dollars to this build. I'm not exaggerating at all. So instead, what I'm going to use is a lighter weight fiberglass, which is just a few dollars a yard, and it's going to handle the stresses in those directions. Adds, I mean, maybe a pound or maybe a pound or two of weight. I don't think it's even going to be that much um, that it'll add to the, the overall build. So that's pretty sweet. I don't think I ever mentioned my my, my uh, weight goal. Um, my calculations tell me that I could potentially build this as light as 16 pounds. Um, However, that was without having any any fittings, or uh, that wasn't I didn't have any allowance for um, additional epoxy. If I if I you know goop up a joint too much or something, um, in reality, I want it to be a durable kayak, so I'm probably going to throw an extra ply on there too. And really, we're going to be targeting probably in the 20 pound range. Um, if I can hit 20 pounds, I'm going to be ecstatic. If it's 22 pounds, I'm going to be pretty darn happy. So that's kind of the range we're looking at for this kayak. And just by way of reference, if you were to build a, a stitch and glue plywood kayak in the same size, you could probably expect it to be about 35 pounds. So this is a substantial weight savings over traditional methods. Um, so uh, the last thing, I had planned on building this one in my shop. I wanted to design it in such a way that I could build it in my shop. Uh, but when I really just, when I looked into it, my shop is downstairs in my house and to get it out the door down the hallway up the stairs and out of the house was going to be basically impossible especially if i wanted to do it without damaging anything um so uh, i've pretty much given up on that plan we're going to build it in the garage and uh so it, it, it is what it is if you've made it this far into this video uh, thank you so much for being here I'm excited to go on this project and have you come along with me. If you're interested in any of the information uh, that I talked about, if you're, or if you just want to support the channel, I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description. And, uh, and I, I appreciate the support and I appreciate the help. It means a lot and it helps me keep this channel afloat. So thank you so much. And with that, let's get building. I'll see you in the next video.